Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Asia Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp, back after a four-month period of absence during research in China. And it's good to see everybody out there today. Our program today is the Leadership Pacific Island Nations Leadership Program with Taiwan. And our guest, um, uh, I'm going to let them introduce themselves <laughs> first. Christina Monroe, Super. Senior Manager with East-West Center of Leadership Programs. Great. And I'm Lori Kahikina, Director of Environmental Services with the City and County of Honolulu. Great. Well, it's great to have you guys here with us. And I know, Christina, you just got back from Palau, so we really appreciate you being in here today. Yes. Um, Glad to be here. Well, tell us about the program. Um, what's, what's the program seek to uh, achieve? Sure. So the Pacific Islands Development Program uh, is a five-year-old program with generous funding from the government of Taiwan, Republic of China. And it serves, it has now served 122 uh, fellows from 15 different island nations, both here in Hawaii, they spend about a month here in Hawaii, and a mm -hmm. month in Taiwan. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, um, now, what, just tell us what some of the Pacific Island nations are that are included in this. Sure, Vanuatu, Papua New Guinea, uh, Solomons, um, Samoa, Federated States of Micronesia, to name a few. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, of course, the Pacific Islands cover a really wide, broad area. Yeah. yeah. Well, what got this program started? What, what was the impetus for this program? Yeah, it, it was really the uh, Taiwanese government coming to our State Department and saying, we would like to invest in these island nations and um, foster their growth and their leadership capacity within both our government, NGO, business sectors. And uh, the State Department then coming to East West Center, knowing we could do the job, having had the Pacific Island Development Program since the 80s, and thinking we could do it, and so far, so good. <laughs> wow, that's great. That is really great. And uh, just how long is the program? It is approximately two months. Two months, mm -hmm. okay. Oh, great. And um, so the folks that participate in the program, uh, these are developmental officials from all these Pacific Island nations? Different things. Some might work for the uh, Palau Conservation Society. Others might work for the Tourism Authority, uh, the National Congress. A lot in government, but again, some business, some NGO, and, all, and really all sectors. Mm, mm, great, great. So, uh, Lori, now what's, what's your role in all of this, Ben? So, my role, I was actually kind of taken aback when East West Center first contacted me. I had no idea this program existed but I was thoroughly impressed. What They were more interested in the city and county's landfill and age power facilities. What, how do we deal with the trash and even our wastewater? Um, some of these other countries, they don't necessarily deal with it in an environmentally friendly way such as city and county does. So we gave tours of our facilities and then also my role when I spoke to um, the, the participants was to talk about leadership and management. So I, I guess, as Christine mentioned, I'm one of the mentors of this program. Oh, that's really interesting. So basically, you're, you're, you're here in Honolulu because yes. you work for the city and yes. county, but you're kind of an advisor to the program? Yeah, when they ask me to participate, whenever they have um, new students come in, then they come and tour our facilities and I will meet with them. Oh, yes. wow, that's great. That is really great. Well, uh, I, I think everybody knows that the Pacific Islands are probably an area which has been at different times kind of overlooked mm -hmm. and uh, probably can benefit from a lot of this sort of attention. Mm -hmm. Um, as I recall, this program was started when Kurt Camel was the Assistant Secretary You're of State. You're exactly right. Yep. And, and he was very, very keen on the he Pacific was. Islands. Uh, his book, which I think is a fabulous book, one of his books, called Pivot, is all about um, how the U.S., well, not all about, but uh, uh, gives a lot of focus to the Pacific Islands and how the U.S. needs to ramp its game up. Yes. Yeah. Still, he's still a great friend and advocate of all our leadership programs, and especially this one. Yeah, we're thankful for the role he played. That is great. That is great. Um, okay, now, okay, so we have the East West Center, we have the Taiwan government, and East West Center means U.S. government. 
so good I, portion of our funding comes from government. That's true. <laughs> so I don't know how you how you count the 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 movers and shakers behind this program. Do you count them as two, or do you count them as three? Or the East West Center and U.S. Governor all rolled into one, or or how, how do we do that? Yeah, sure. Um, Taiwan, of course, being a, the primary funder mm -hmm. for this one, is is our go-to. We we ask their inputs, of course, and they um, they guide us. But what we really respect about them as, as a funder is that they, they trust what we do, they like what we do. But we're in constant dialogue with them and the IDIA uh, folks there to find out what's going on with them, what would they like to see more or less of in the program. So they're our, they're our closest friends in the, in the process. Oh, that's great. That's great. I, I know that uh, I just uh, came back from uh, China and Taiwan uh, a few weeks ago, and I, on the way back to Hawaii, I stopped in Taiwan and had a meeting with some folks in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and I know they're rather keen on this program. Yeah, that's really great. Um, so now, when you're in Taiwan, where is the training carried out at? It's, uh, we are nearby, we work with the IDI, the, um, Institute for Diplomacy and um, Foreign Affairs, okay. and they uh, play a big role. So we stay right next door to them. They guide our meetings. They take us on uh, site visits of importance, which echo the important case studies of leadership they do here in Honolulu to see how things are done in Taiwan. So, um, okay, do you stay mostly in Taipei, or you're hand out is spread out throughout the yes the a good portion of the time is in Taipei but they also have a, a final retreat and reflection space it's a bit outside of town so get out a little bit yes oh yeah. that's super that's super now do you go along to uh, Taiwan or are you just sort of holding the fort down oh, just holding the best it is an interesting <laughs> idea no I just hold the fort down here <laughs> I see that's great that's great I know, and Taiwan, Taiwan's very concerned about environmental issues, and uh, especially with the party that's, that's ruling Taiwan at the minute, they're very big on being green, on environmental mm -hmm. issues. And uh, so it's interesting to, to hear you talk about some of those environmental issues. Um, so how many folks um, do you have in your section at East West Center that handles this program? Yeah, we have about nine, uh, nine people that do Pacific Island initiatives, mm -hmm. and that could be a range. The North Pacific Women's Action Program, led by Gretchen Alter. We also have uh, Scott Croker. We have um, Nick Barker. Um, many people that are involved with different aspects of Pacific Island programming, and this is one of those. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. That's great. That's great. And... Um, so as this program goes forward, mm -hmm. how do you see it evolving? Great question. We like, we like futures questions. And I think that's an important reason why Lori's with me here today, that I think moving forward in our leadership programs, profiling Hawaii's leadership cases and community leaders that we respect, and making sure people understand leadership questions aren't easy. There's dilemmas, there's trade-offs, there's, there's a lot of complexity. And I think when they sit down and talk story with, with Lori from all these different islands, they share, there's a camaraderie that comes mm -hmm. from being island nations together struggling with problems, and as well the, um, the leadership case studies that Hawaii can provide. Not that we're better or more advanced, but that we're part of this neighborhood mm -hmm. of Pacific Islands and meeting friends struggling with waste, whether that's solid or wastewater as Lori is, I think they, they feel a, a connection, a kind of relief, and then also a lot of learning that comes from it. So moving forward, Profiling what Hawaii does best mm -hmm. and introducing them to those folks and having honest dialogues about the, the choices you have to make. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure the program has had many successes, but what's a kind of a outstanding success that you might tell us about? Oh, my goodness, that's a hard one. <laughs> well, do you want to say more about no, that time? No, 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 not at all. If you need me to give you time. <laughs> I'd, love, okay. I'd love her to describe a little bit more what um, they did with okay, you when okay. they had a conversation. And sure, sure. When she first approached me, um, usually I asked for, what are some topics that you know I could put together a PowerPoint? She's like, no, no PowerPoint. Just speak from your heart. And it's like, I don't know anything about this program. So I went to, they had a reception prior to them meeting with me, and I, and I took down notes of everything, what they were all interested in, and a lot of them were environmental issues, um, 
uh, having you know clean water, what do you do with the sewage, um, and leadership and mm. management questions. And so I just went one by one on some of those things, what they're interested in, and I really enjoyed myself. That was a uh, I'm not used to speaking like that. Usually it's a set. PowerPoint and here's my notes and at the end questions, but it was so interactive. I really enjoyed it and I, I really do hope they invite me over every year for their, their program because it was educational for me too. Oh, that's you just great. take for granted what we have here. You know, you flush the toilet, you turn on the water, it's there and you just meeting with them, I, I have a much greater appreciation for what we have here. Oh, that's great, that's great. <laughs> well, now that we talked about um, successes what are some of the challenges what's the biggest challenge sure i i think anytime we do uh, residential leadership programs and we have a, a large suite of those at east west center i think people get really jazzed and they have a cohort of like-minded folks mm -hmm. they live with them they eat with them they have fun with them they're they're doing trainings with them that transition back home and how how can what Lori talked yeah. about be used? Now I go back to this big bureaucracy that's actually a little bit difficult to change. Mm. So how do we navigate this change with my new knowledge and not get too big for my britches? Change bureaucracy in, in a Pacific Island nation. Exactly. Yeah. So they're empowered as an individual. But how can we increasingly, and our challenge, I think, as, uh, as trainers or facilitators, is to give them tools that they're going to be able to share with their teams mm. so that they're changing systems. They may feel jazzed, but no one's going to care maybe when they get back. So how can they make that real for their community and make it something useful to others around them? So a little bit more of the train the trainer model, I think, is useful, giving them tools they can go back and teach others about. And then they've got a team on board with them right. for the change they want to make. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, these are all Pacific Island nations that you deal with, but each Pacific Island nation is different. It has its yeah. own different culture, its own different customs, its own different language. Uh, so there are a lot of challenges, aren't there? Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Having just been to Palau and Yap in Micronesia, just seeing the difference between the four states in Micronesia and then Palau and and Marshalls, all really different. There's some shared, we're cousins, <laughs> there's some shared challenges, but they're also very unique in their geography and in their, in their systems and their history. So being both respectful of their differences, and that's just within the North Pacific, then you throw in the South Pacific, and a lot of differences. And they themselves often maybe know more about the U.S. than they do about each other. So building that uh, Pacific yeah. camaraderie, they might not have actually met someone from uh, Melanesia, and they're Polynesian. They're, Sometimes not, and so getting a pan-Pacific cohort vibe where, and around shared challenges, we're all dealing with waste, mm -hmm. but we're all from very different places, that can be one of the biggest takeaways that some of the participants have is that pan-Pacific family. That's a really interesting comment. I think what we'll do is we'll stop there. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take a break. Uh, you're watching Asia in Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp. Our show today is Pacific Island Leadership Program with Taiwan. Uh, uh, I have two guests here with me, uh, Christina and Laurie, who are filling us in on this program, and we'll be right back, so don't go away. Hello, everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. That's you. I want to know, will you watch my show? I hope you do. It's on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, and it's out of the comfort zone, and I'll be your host, R.B. Kelly. See you there. Welcome back to Asia in Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp. Our program today is Pacific Island Leadership Program uh, with Taiwan. And uh, my guests are Christina and Laurie, and uh, they're very much involved with this program. Uh, Christina is the, the boss. And uh, Laurie, I guess you would call it a, as a consultant? Sure. Yeah. And a big boss in her own right, in her own yeah, land. Yeah, right. <laughs> 
So this is a really great program uh, that really um, it gives so much help to Pacific Island nations. And, um, but okay, the United States definitely has interest in Pacific Islands, but there are other countries that do too, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, do you see, do they have similar programs? Sure, uh, Australia, New Zealand especially invest heavily, heavily in leadership development, a lot of aid. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our fellows will work for Australian aid funded organizations. Oh, so I sure, see. and it's a, some of our other programs, the North Pacific a Women's Action Program brings together funding from New Zealand and U.S. So definitely we're uh, working together with, mm -hmm. other, with other nations to, to support, collaborate with Pacific Island nations. Okay. Now, um, let me see. Pacific, uh, all the, all the how should I, I don't want to say countries quite yet. All the areas of the Pacific Islands that you're dealing with, these are independent nations, but there's still some European colonies. Uh, in the Pacific. Do you deal with colonies as well? Sure, yeah. Uh, and some have special relationships like Tahiti with France. There's, there's definitely different uh, levels of relationships with uh, past or current um, European or, or U.S. There's American Samoa, um, although, um, of course, the compact agreement with Micronesia. So, yeah, different relationship with different countries. Mm. Mm, that's great. That's great. That's great. Um, me, um, just a question on the tip of my tongue. I almost <laughs> lost it. Um, okay, now when you're in Taiwan, you're, you said you're mostly in Taipei, right? But um, what, what are some of the other areas in Taiwan that you go to uh, to carry out the training? It's a good question, and next time I hope to go myself so I can answer that question better. <laughs> Our, of, of other staff members normally escort them, so oh, I see. so I'm probably not the best person to ask that, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> but a lot of it is um, looking at, at case studies. They have our important departments, so mostly in Taipei, but again, they, they end in a retreat that's outside of town, and that's also to get away kind of from the urban so they can enjoy a closing retreat in, in the outskirts. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So the real focus is on leadership development, mm. right? Um, do you guys get into like um, village development, and land reform, or that kind of thing? Or is that out of your scope of concern? No, no, it's a great question. East West Center leadership programs generally work with the individuals, mm -hmm. sometimes with teams, but primarily we get to all those issues, but not in a way that we're directly doing like an international aid or an international development office mm -hmm. would do. Mm -hmm. We more work with individuals embedded in those systems, give them tools, give them ideas that are more, um, that they apply to their context. So we might not know about, um, specifically about wastewater in a certain village, but that's why when we bring them here to Honolulu, we give them general leadership, foundational leadership mm -hmm. skills. Mm -hmm. And then we have them um, do different case studies with Lori looking at solid waste and uh, wastewater. We also go, go to NOAA, we go to PACOM, we go to the Women's Correctional oh, Facility, well. really? um, looking at deep, deep sea research that's happening. So we do a lot of different leadership mm -hmm. case studies in the community that would give them that context specific to insert into their work. How would you characterize Pacific Island leadership? Is there a Pacific Island mode of leadership? Oh boy, that's a dangerous <laughs> question. Uh -oh. <laughs> like it would be uh -oh. here in Hawaii. I, to generalize is, is difficult. I think one thing working with the Pacific Islands, 15 nations that we do, we realize how it's unlikely to be able to generalize across the 15. Sure, sure. I think there's some shared and some things that Hawaii shares as well. I mm. think there's a, an importance of elder reverence and elder knowledge. I think there's a challenge between um, indigenous and Western knowledge systems and how and that's, are those That's kind of where I wanted to go, yeah. Sure, okay. Because <laughs> I know that can be tricky. Sure. Yeah, that can be very, very tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I think I interrupted you, so no, I, I no. I, but I think you know it's something Hawaii mm -hmm. has as well. It's a, it's a blessing we have to be able to have different systems to make sense of, not mm -hmm. just getting from one system. But then it takes some negotiation around that, and who's the authority? Just coming back from 
um, YAP, they have a, a fourth branch of government in addition to the three we have, and that's the traditional leaders. So how do, and they are consulted just like a, a branch of government. And so how they merge and do that is unique to say how Palau is doing it. So exciting to see that. Could you very broadly say that Pacific Island leadership is consultative in nature, that it seeks to create um, harmony? You know, sometimes Western leadership is mm -hmm. sometimes characterized as being a little bit set them up and knock them down, uh, kind of like, oh, well, here we are, guys, we're going to do it my way, you know. <laughs> Uh, sort of, I, I guess that's a, a, a classical notion of Western mm. leadership. Mm. Whereas I, I, I somehow have this notion that, like, I, I'm more familiar with East Asia than I am with Pacific Islands, and um, and I think in in the Far East, there's more of a consultative, collaborative approach to leadership. Mm. And I, I, I have a sneaking suspicion that might be true in Pacific Islands, but I don't really know. I'm, I think what so you I'm could, depending on your expertise. Here. No, no, and I'd be curious what, what Lori thinks <laughs> just in talking with them a little bit, but I, um, a lot in, in her mentorship. But I, I think it comes from also having a small space. Mm -hmm. I, I think geography does come to play here. We have, uh, they, we all have limited resources, but islands, as we know, we're more aware of our right. resources. And that means how we steward those and who gets to consult in. It's probably going to need to be a bit more collaborative because mm. we're aware of the limits of this space we occupy. Right. So maybe by force you can't you can't go west and run <laughs> off and, <laughs> and find vast tracts of land. So I think that that plays in just as when you look at the difference between Hawaii and mainland leadership, you might be able, maybe maybe not, but I think you could say something that that it had to do with the islands, but I don't know, Laurie, what you think after um, your all your experience well, in Hawaii. But well, in, I, I can see it both ways. Um, because our resources are limited, we sometimes mm. do draw that line, you know, even between government, state, and city, and, and feds, like, no, this is my responsibility, this is yours. So it, it's mm. both, both ways. Sometimes we're collaborative, and sometimes it's, here's the line. So. Mm. This is our kuleana, exactly, that's yours. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> For all our non-Hawaii uh, listeners, yeah. kuleana means turf. <laughs> yeah. Very well put. <laughs> uh, uh, that's, that's really, really interesting. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, cross-cultural leadership, that's, that's, that's um, uh, a challenging enterprise. Uh, well, um, how about, so what's some of the feedback you've received on the program? Yeah. Obviously, the Thai government of Taiwan must like it or they wouldn't have renewed it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, and I should say that. So we'll, uh, we just received order of five more years of funding, so until 2022. So that's, that's good feedback from them. But I, I do think it's based on participant feedback. I think, um, and, and Lori, you heard, you heard from their opening ceremony mm -hmm. a little bit more about what they wanted to get out of it. I think we're hitting that pretty good and exceeding expectations in terms of building this pan-Pacific network. Mm -hmm. I think leaving with that really, really opens their mind to other possibilities and seeing the differences and the similarities between other Pacific. So the network itself, mm -hmm. we get a lot of feedback about that. I've just met about five, in my travels, I just met about five or six alumni. And I mm -hmm. think that feedback, that it's, it's opened them up to approaching problem solving or taking a more appreciative lens to problem solving and trying it from different directions, that's pretty big feedback we get. Basically, unlearning and relearning is just as important as learning mm -hmm. in our programs, mm -hmm. and I think they, they find that impactful. Mm. Mm. I see, I see. Do you, um, okay, you're basically interested in leadership. I know one of the great natural resources of Pacific Island nations are the great fishery resources. Do you have any interface with uh, like fishery organizations and um, helping them maybe to ramp up their leadership skills? Mm. Sure, sure. You you can't walk too far in the Pacific and not not hit up against this huge resource. A lot of people are involved in, and sure, a lot of the fellows we have have some affiliation with government, most likely government or or NGO, some business interest related to, 
to fisheries, and that's mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a it's a huge deal for them. I think looking at even more recently looking at building infrastructure around say the canning of tuna right, and, right. and putting in those facilities so not just using it as a selling our resources but how can we do value add right. um, and that but that will get in you know to waste how would they deal with the waste of that and process that um, and every island's kind of making different calculations around that I think. There, there, there seems to be like a lot of emphasis on environmental protection um, I don't know if this question sounds a little naive. I, I'm going to stick my neck out here. Why? <laughs> why why is there, does this program seem to put so much emphasis on environmental protection? Oh, yeah. Did you want to answer that? Well, so you could say why it's important, oh. and then it'll probably loop back to why we add it. <laughs> it actually, went in, in that um, reception, a lot of them did come up with that, the environmental. And I think, um, as Christina has said, we're on an island. Mm -hmm. We don't have excessive land like the mainland where you can just dump trash in a, in a big pit somewhere. Mm -hmm. our, our land is so, um, um, uh, we only have a very limited amount, so how we deal with it. Some of the students, what they've shared with me, they do just have a landfill and they, and they just dump everything there. There's no monitoring. Mm. There's, our landfill is very strict. What can, right. what, um, what can be disposed of there, when, what time, and we have to close it every day. We have to cover it. Whereas there's birds, there's rubbish, there's debris. People can sift through the landfills over there. That's not allowed here. And oh. so I think um, just, just opening their eyes on how things can, are done here, um, it was really educational for them. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So. That's great. You know, sometimes when I think of, uh, and this might sound just a little bit naive too, so you'll forgive me again, I hope. Uh, but uh, sometimes when I think of Pacific Island nations, as, as you guys have pointed out several times today, the land mass is, is somewhat limited, and some of them are really challenged by, um, what should we say, like, uh, their land is disappearing. <laughs> and um, it, it, it has that, is that an area which you kind of address leadership of how to reserve the land that you have? Sure, I, it's, a, it's a big issue. It's not a future issue for Pacific Islands. I think that's why they take a global lead on sea level I've rise. I've just been told that we change. have one minute left. So I, okay. I have, okay. To, I have to notify you. Yeah. Super important, right? And as they have less land and have to move infrastructure, what, it's salination. Yeah. Um, right. Talked a lot with Lori about yeah. that. It's something we'll have to deal with in Hawaii and they will too. Great, great, great. Well, uh, I think we've about come to the end of our time here. I'd like to thank our guests for joining us today. And uh, we all need to pay more attention to Pacific Islands because they're uh, unfortunately have been overlooked a bit. And uh, this program certainly does seeks to right the balance. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. And I'd like to see you again next week when my guest will be Peter Olson. Peter Olson is a former Pentagon consultant uh, and strategist. And he brings a wealth of knowledge uh, here to share with all of us. So we'll see you again next week right here on Asian Review.